I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 166, Twisted Edge Extreme Snowboarding. Released in 1998, this game was developed by Boss Game Studios and published by Chemco. Well, it's happened again. A game I've not only never heard of before, but somehow I don't recall even knowing it was one of the games on the list until it was chosen. Hey, I'm down for another snowboarding game. 1080 was a pretty good time, and I love snowboard kids. Really, it feels like it would be hard to screw up a snowboarding game as long as the physics engine is decent. It's like a hybrid of skateboarding and racing. I guess we'll find out what this one is like today. Let's get into it. Booting up the game, I saw competition and stunt challenge in the main menu, so I guess I'll do competition. It started on novice and all the other difficulties were unlocked later. There were four people to play as, Gan, Sylvia, Rio, and Kevin. I went with Sylvia, cause she had high speed. Then I had to choose one of four boards. Well, obviously I went with Cat, even though it wasn't actually a cat. When the race started, it was the most stereotypical surfer dude voice counting down. Go! When the race itself started, it was... something. I crashed here while falling from a high distance, but I think it's because my board was turned. There are three other computer races in the race, and they stay pretty close together. Most of this track was just going in a straight line. There wasn't really any obstacles or anything like that. I barely managed to get first, not really due to any reason other than I crashed previously. Race 2 was on Funky Town. I learned if you happen to run into another rider, you both crash briefly. I moved into first place pretty early in this one. This course at least has some mildly interesting elements to it, like you cross a bridge at one point, and there's a UFO in the background. It was a very easy win, although that's to be expected in the novice circuit. Third and final course was Splashdown. Right at the start, the computers ran into each other, and I had no one in front of me. Look, I'm normally one to care about a game playing well over how it looks, but these courses are just so bland. All you see is the white snow as far as you can see. Give me something to look at. About halfway through, there was an ice trail down the course. It seems it doesn't really change your physics, though. I won quite easily, and that was that. The end of the novice circuit. It said I was awesome and gave me a little medal as a reward. Well, now it was immediately into the intermediate competition. This course was a bit more interesting. Not only were there some brown rocky walls, but the track had multiple jumps and even branching paths. Besides those things though, it was more of the same. I could tell the computer was getting better now because I only got third place this time. The circuit is scored on a point system and I only got one point for this with first place getting four. For the second course, it was back to repeats. Funky town again. Except this time it was mirrored. See? The UFO is on the right side this time. The way the game controls is really basic. There's just steering with the joystick and the jump button. The steering isn't as precise as something like 1080 snowboarding, so it feels a bit boring. The next track was another mirror repeat of Easy Slider. Man, it just feels like nothing happens in these races. Like I pull ahead and then there's just endless snow in front of me. You can't even like pull back or forward on the joystick to adjust your speed. It only does when you turn. Hey, I'll take it, at least it's easy. Alright, the fourth and final race was a new one. Nah, just kidding, it was Splashdown again. It was pretty funny watching my character's shadow glitch out in this pipe. I did pretty awful in this race and I got last place. It informed me how much I sucked and said I didn't qualify for the Expert League. That's okay, there's always next time. When I went to play again, I noticed I had a new board, the Flower. Its stats were way better than all the others. Sweet. In this second go at it, I learned you can just pause and restart a race for free. Well, that sure is helpful. I used this to try to figure out how to get the boosted start, because it was really holding me back. It's supposed to be double tapping the up button after the word go, but it just wasn't working. I even tried spamming up, and that didn't work either. I'll take this time to talk about the graphics and audio. The graphics are good enough, but they're not amazing. I mean, it's not hard to have good graphics when 90% of the screen is just snow. The music, on the other hand, is pretty cool. It's instrumental with mostly guitar, bass, and drums. The bass player goes so hard in every single song, and there's this one where the guitar sounds just like Tom Morello. It's pretty cool. 
Anyway, I got more than enough points for first overall this time around, and I'd unlocked the expert circuit. It's on to the third run through these races, and we start off with a new course, Glacier Gulch. I'd say this was the hardest one so far, and probably the most interesting. Instead of going straight the entire time, there were some actual tight turns to keep me on my toes. Not any more interesting in the aesthetics department, though. I thought I was getting first place here, but somehow I got outsped in midair. How does that make sense? Come on. After a few resets, and with somehow not crashing despite slamming into the cliff, I took down first place in this race. Four to go. The next race I knocked out first on my first try. That always feels good to do. I was struggling a bit on the third race when I figured out something new. If you do tricks in the air, you gain a bit of speed boost when you land. This explains why I was getting passed shortly after jumps. Now I'll be unstoppable. I easily got first place on Funky Town and it was on to the fifth and final race. If you're thinking it'll be a new map, nah, just splash down again. Also, this guy tried to murder me. After quite a few resets, I took first place in this race and I'd won the Expert League. I learned from one of my viewers that you need first place in every race to unlock the last league, so I was resetting for that despite having enough points to win. It gives you a medal when you get all first places, so I need to get all those medals. I went back and quickly got the medal on intermediate and now I'd unlock the master difficulty. Oh man, we actually get a new course here, Polar Paradise. It might not look all that different from the other tracks, but at least it played different. So many huge jumps to do tricks and get speed boosts. Like my favorite trick, tuna salad. This was also the longest course by far, clocking in at over two minutes in length. Easy first place though. The computers were being quite a bit more aggressive now. They were trying to sabotage my chances by just slamming into me. Doesn't matter which one of them wins as long as it's not me. I was struggling with this second race. No idea what was going on with this jank here, but yeah. When there's a jump and a turn combined, it's so hard to take the turn well. Felt like the computers weren't bothered by it though. It took like 12 tries or so, but I knocked out first place finally. I crushed the next two races, and they were all repeats at this point except that first one. I realized there were multiple versions of each track. In this hard version of Funky Town, the bridge is missing a segment, so you had to jump over it. I didn't even notice while playing, that's how bored I was. I'm only noticing now while making this video. Probably because the tracks are just so bland looking. I got first on the final race and earned my medal. This was not the last difficulty though. It's time for the twisted circuit. For beating that circuit, I had unlocked Boreth as a racer, along with the midway board. Much better stats now, so hopefully it helps. You might be expecting some cool new course, but nope, it's all the same ones as Master. What a letdown. I did manage to do a 900 somehow. Yesterday's stream was... How did I do that? I just did a 900! Literally no clue how I did because it doesn't tell you in game and the scan of the manual on archive.org is so blurry I can't read it. I was having a lot of trouble with Twisty Canyon. The hard version has way more jumps and it leads to more frequent crashes. After around an hour I finally had a close run but I nearly blew it. No, why are you this out of control, dude? Come on. Yes, get wrecked. God. Screw this, man. It was kind of weird to have something so hard come up after breezing through the game, but I was glad to be done. The other races weren't that much trouble, and I'd finally won on the highest difficulty. It said I mastered the game and am a superb snowboarder. Then it played a cutscene with my character celebrating with some confetti while the credits played. I uh, had zero audio during these. <laughs> I'm not sure if the game glitched or there's just no audio here. I didn't like the awkward silence, so I tried my best to do a cover of the music for the people watching.
Well, there was still the stunt challenge to look into, so let's see what that's all about. I unlocked Bob for beating Twisted Difficulty, and he had max stats. This is actually a new course called Big Jump. It, uh, had a really big jump. In stunt challenge, you just have a score goal to reach. It was 2,000. There was also a cheat code to unlock a naked snowboarder? Why? <laughs> sure, I guess you can play as this guy if you want. His stats are worse than Bob's, though. There is one more weird thing about this game. If you look at this entry on Wikipedia, there is a source statement from the dev studio that says this game actually has a story mode. It's unlockable as an easter egg though, because they think it's lame. As far as I can tell, this is the only place online that mentions this. Either the Wikipedia article is just wrong, the source they used is wrong, or the person who gave the interview to that source is lying. It's so weird. Either way, that's about all there is for this one game complete. So yeah, there you have it. My journey to beating Twisted Edge Extreme Snowboarding. Um, yeah, this game's okay, I guess. Like, it half controls like an arcade style game and half like a realistic game. There's just not really any reason to play this over either 1080 Snowboarding or Snowboard Kids. I just don't see it, so I'll always recommend them first over this. But if you've played both of them several times, maybe you could try this for some variety. It's not bad by any means, it's just the worst of what's there. The maps blend together and the controls are kind of boring. It had good music though, and it runs smooth, so yeah. I gave it a 4 out of 10 for enjoyability, and a 6.5 out of 10 for difficulty. Only because of that one course in the Twisted Circuit. Alright, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. We had a randomized marble race to determine which game was next, so here's how that played out. Or skip to the timestamp on screen to skip straight to the game selection. We got 225 games on the list. What is going on here? Quality assurance. Alright, everybody's here. Even Magical Tetris Challenge and this Japanese game, whatever that is. Mortal Kombat, Scooby-Doo. But only one will be picked. Let's find out. Alright, everybody's slowly coming down here into that Taco Bell coin game. You know the one, it says you can win a free burrito if you catch a quarter. Uh, it appears Torok would be Torok 2. Quite ahead, but honestly it's so hard to tell. International Track and Field, somebody mentioned that. Uh, I see a Mahjong game in the lead currently. Pro Shinan Mahjong Suwanamono. Uh, currently in the lead, coming down the funnel here, another Japanese game as well. I believe there are three Japanese, four Japanese games, Power Rangers, win back. I had that on the PS2, it was pretty fun, but we shall see what happens here. NBA Live is gone, no, oh, Ocarina of Time is down, as is Jet Force Gemini, will not be the game today, folks. And the marbles are getting... Heated here, I believe. Oh, that... That was like an equalizer. Interesting. Okay, I don't... Okay, Pro Shinan Mahjong still in the lead. Uh, oh my god, it's impossible to tell. Bomberman off the cliff. I see cruising in there. Double Tsunomori, that's Animal Crossing. This is chaos. It's impossible to tell, folks. Cruising USA could be Glover as well. Doom 64, I rented that as a kid. I don't really remember it, but I remember enjoying it a bit. Madden game, Fox Sports College Hoops, what is happening? It is so hard to tell. Doom 64 currently in the lead. Double Tsunomori not far behind. And this says superheating. What is going to happen here, folks? And Fighters Destiny 2, the first down. Oh my god, it's chaos. The next Torok game. International Superstar Soccer coming down. No, off the cliff. How do they survive? Shogi is in the lead. Doom 64 as well. Shogi would just be a disaster. We don't want that. And another equalizer here. Some sort of Japanese game. WCW NWO Revenge. Puyo Puyo in party coming down. Packaging. Is this the end? Oh, wait! No! Out of nowhere! What? Pachinko 
365 Nietzsche. <laughs> oh no. It's got to be played at some point, chat. Alrighty, chat. There it is. Pachinko 365 Nietzsche. It has been decided. But yeah, if you're still here watching, you're awesome. Thank you so much. If you had a good time, consider hitting that like button, or maybe even dropping a subscription. Or hey, maybe even watch another one of these videos that's on screen now. And yeah, see you next time.